So what we're going to talk about tonight is um, <clears throat> the last, I don't know, what is it, 50, 60 days now that we've been kind of going through this weird period in our country. Uh, you know, the, the one theme that's been going through my heart, and, and it's weird because I've been going through like phases in my heart, uh, is faith without works is dead. Yeah, that's a tough scripture. And I was talking to Pastor Todd about it this week. I'm like, you know, I really think I'm going to talk about faith without works is dead. And he's like, why that topic? I said, because it, this, this 60 days really got us to check if we really believe what we said that we believe in. You know what I mean? So like, am I ready to go through the battle and the war? Am I ready to die for Jesus? Bam, a, a virus hits and we, whoa, what's going on, right? The unknown hit us. Are we ready to do what we said we're going to do? And I was going to take it that way, but then I was talking and we were just sitting there chatting and I thought, you know what? It's not faith without works is dead. It's faith without fruit is dead. Think about it. Faith without the fruit is not faith. It's, it's actually, the Bible actually calls it a counterfeit faith, if you think about it. And I'm going to, the reason why I'm talking about this is because I found that as a family here, I sift myself through these sermons first. Like, I go through this and go through this and go through this. You know what stinks about knowledge? It doesn't just puff up. It comforts you. So, like, when this stuff started happening and I saw government, you guys know that I have the ministry about government and things like that in the Constitution. I started to think, man, here we go. This is exactly what you prepped me for, Lord, the last 12, 13 years of my life. This is it. This is the moment that I needed to have happen so that the ministry could launch. And we're going to go move forward and we're going to be here and we're going to team up with the church and bam, it's going to be awesome. Literally 10 days ago, he said, stop. Because I depended on my knowledge. My knowledge. And it hurt. And we're talking about Pentecost coming up, you know. And I keep hearing people ask, you know, man, anticipation and all these things. And 10 days ago, he told me to shut up. Like, just shut up. Don't, don't do that. Not right now. It came to the point on Saturday where I told Carrie, I'm done. I don't even know if this ministry should continue. It's crazy. I was like, what is going on, Lord? Why did this happen? What, what are you doing to me? And all that years of study, I know a lot of scripture. I studied a long time to, to, to preach and I evangelized for a long time. And, and then I studied the law and the constitution. I studied state constitutions. I studied founders and reformers and I kept missing it the whole time. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I missed it the whole time. This one little thing. I studied reformers, but I kind of started to forget about the reformer. Does this make sense? And I hope this ministers to you because, dude, it is, it's, it's so good for me to do this. When we're coming up on Pentecost, I started thinking about what am I expecting? What am I expecting? What's the expectation? What's going to happen? And I've heard many different comments, and I've heard people say more. We just want more. More of what? What does that look like? More of what? Right? And then I started to think about faith without fruit is dead. What does that mean? Right? Like we have all this faith, but how many, like for me, I'll just use me then forget asking you. When I started to see things happen, I was starting to get frustrated and upset. And what was I putting my ear to? And then my knowledge started to pop out. And I noticed that I would just quote things off memory. I wasn't asking the Lord about what to quote. I was just quoting things. Do you guys know what I mean? And all of a sudden it starts to rise up in you. To the point where literally Saturday, I was in Pastor Todd's office on Sunday. I said, I don't care if this thing stops anymore. And we started talking about Pentecost. And the one place he brought me to was this. You know what I'm expecting? Christ. Not a gift. Not a fire. Nothing like that. I just want him. Him. And him alone. Because out of him flows joy, peace, love, patience, brotherly kindness. And we're going to read some scriptures here that actually make sense to this. And if it convicts you, amen, because we're going to talk about hope in a minute. It's really cool. And, and, and oh, you, I was reading, I got to start over. I don't have to start over. I just, you know, 2 Timothy chapter 2 says this, verses 15. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But listen to this. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. What's been happening the last couple, this last two months? Conspiracy theories. What's happening next? The government's doing this, but are they really doing that? Are they really out for our best interests? Why aren't the churches doing something about it? Come on, have you guys seen anything on social media? You know what that does? It produces ungodliness if you're not rooted in Jesus. 
because all these conspiracies started flooding it, and you should see my inbox on Facebook. Constantly goes off. Here's another conspiracy theory. Here's another theory of this. Here's another theory of that. And you know what it does to people? It freezes them. It paralyzes them. Is that Jesus? I notice that the more I dig into the word, the more that I pray, he gives me direction. His words are pure, the Bible says, and they endure forever. And so he says here, uh, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. Uh, and I'll just quote it from King James. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Not the word of my opinion, not the word of a conspiracy theory, not the word of my knowledge, the word of God. And if we're not rooted in that, the next season of your life, let's say something awesome. Here, let's, let's do this. Let's say we're all expecting something to happen on Pentecost. And all we got was an awesome service of family and love. Would you be okay with it? Think about it. I wasn't at first. Lord, I want to see something move and change in my life. And here I am seeking the hand of God, not the heart of God. And if you can relate to that, say amen. Amen. Because we're in this season of like, Lord, sift me first. We're talking about changing nations and cities. You know how awesome God is? Pastor Todd and Jan, we've been talking about Speaking Life since what, September? They're doing a musical in this city called Speak Life. I've never seen, I've lived here five years, I've never seen something like that before. Influence happens when you do those things, but sometimes I think we miss out of the pursuit of, and and it's a good desire, covet those spiritual gifts, but he said, if you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. I just want him now. I just want him. And everything that comes with it. You know what it means when he says, seek me? You know what he said to his disciples? Some of you may die for the faith. I resolved that 21 years ago. I realized one day I could die for the faith. Did you you know that that might happen? It doesn't even cross my mind anymore. This may happen to us. I remember going on college campuses and we would have people speak, literally do protests against us, saying that I hated people. I hated women because I didn't want them to get abortions. I mean, just speaking all crazy stuff against us. It wouldn't even faze me because it's like I expect it from the world. I do. And then we come here sometimes, and sometimes I feel like if we can't be open and honest about our own selves because we might get judged amongst one another. Do you guys know what I'm saying? And then it comes down to this, where he says, this, they'll know that you're my children by the love that you have for one another. Right? And here we are talking about What are the fruits? What is faith that produces fruit? And I started to look up, what are the fruits? We talked about Galatians. We're we're talking about Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to love people when you're being loved. It's sure as heck of a hard, way harder to love when you're not being loved. Do you know what I mean? And this is the standard that he gave us. And I I was reading where he said, when you look into the perfect law of liberty, I'll get to that in a minute, in James, he's talking about the law of Christ, not the law of Moses. And there's this thing that where Christ tells you to go love one another, love the Lord your God. So in other words, he's empowering us to do that. And it's like, I'm looking at this going, Lord, do I love even when I'm not being loved? Do I do that? Well, I I missed that for for a few weeks, actually. And you know what's so cool? I was so scared. Saturday. So scared. Because I'm like, well, then what's, what? you're telling me to stop? What, what do you want me to do? No, he was bringing me to the end of myself. And you know what he was doing? He was answering my prayer. I said, Lord, all I want is you. I don't care about it. Guys, you know what's cool? I've seen miracles. Uh, people have been healed of cancer. I've seen all that stuff, dude. None of that compares for him telling me that I'm his son. None of it. Nothing that he's done for me compares for him telling me who I am in him. And you know the first time I ever heard God tell me I'm a son? Three years ago when I came here. I've been serving him since I was 21 years old, and I knew God as my Lord. I didn't know him as my father. So it was easy to just do. I was a robot. It's like, go preach the gospel, dude. Yes, sir. I'll go do it. Go lay hands on people. Yes, sir, I'll do it. And he was faithful. His word will always be performed. I did not know what he thought of me. You know, I used to say really crazy things like this. Lord, I'll serve you till the day I die. Even if you, ask my wife, I wish she was here. I used to say, even if you send me to hell because I deserve it, I'll serve you anyway. He changed my heart three years ago. It's like, no, 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 you don't deserve that because of my son. Now you're my son. Oh, there's nothing like it. I don't care about giftings. I don't care about, they're awesome. They're a blast to use. I love being in places where we're able to speak over people and 
see things in their life because God counts that faithful and he, he wants to tell them these things. But at the end of the day, who cares if we don't have Christ? What is a revival without Jesus? I'm, I'm asking myself, what is a revival without the Lord and his word? What is, a, what is a move of God if it stays inside here? Because if it transforms you and you have the faith of the Son of God in you, you're going to have the fruit of the Son of God in you. And guess what he told his disciples to do? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Because it moves you. There's something about faith that gives you fruit, and that fruit just wants to get out. You want to feed people with it. Amen? There's something inside of you. Kevin, you're a perfect example. Let me speak over you for a minute. Even through all this, that dude and his wife are still out praying until, what, one or two in the morning? They're not perfect. They'll tell you that themselves. Who cares? They're remaining faithful to what they know to do. And God's perfecting them in that way. And this is why your leader's here. Because he's perfecting you along the way. Just like, uh, who, where is he? Dale. Have you ever seen the guy down? <laughs> Seriously, I think a tornado could hit his house and he'd be giggling. <laughs> Not you, Gloria, maybe him. but <laughs> <laughs> He'd be giggling, but look at the fruit now that's happening. Someone got touched tonight, huh? Dude, answer to prayer, God's favor, bro. It's called fruit. Because as you abide in him, you can't but bear fruit, dude. And it's the coolest thing to see. You know what I mean? And it was convicting to me that I was starting to use my knowledge instead of the fruit. My knowledge. It's easy to know things, man. You know what's crazy? And I, this, is a, this is a blessing, kind of a curse too. And, and let me explain. I memorize things the first time I read them. I just memorize. I, can, I have a photographic memory. If I read a quote, I'll know it tomorrow. Just is what it is. So I didn't have to study a lot. Do you guys know what I'm saying? I was that kid that never studied, took a test and aced it. I was that kind of kid. It was a blessing because I didn't have to take the time to do that because the vigor inside of me wants to go preach it. The problem is I never let it sift through me. I never let it cut me deep. I never let, let it understand. I never understood that Christ was for me, not against me. I didn't know when I got saved that Christ was the one that redeemed me to bring me unto the Father, that he could call me a son. So I was doing this whole thing of knowledge, thinking knowledge is power. When he said, I didn't come unto you with words of men's wisdom, Paul said, but in the power and the demonstration of the Spirit of God. I didn't know that. Does this make sense to anybody? Because this is crazy. I wasn't even supposed to go here. I'm just going off my heart here, right? And so as I'm talking and I'm looking through the fruits of the Spirit, he says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. And then there's another one, joy. It's easy to have joy with people around you have joy. But then we have to get honest as a family. Who's struggling right now? Thank you for stealing another idea of mine. Because we were supposed to pray, right? I was like, man, just let him do it. I, I literally signaled him. I just let him do this. He's like, no, you're coming up. <laughs> what? what am I going to do now? Right? It's easy to have joy with people around you, but what happens in closed doors? What happens when you have to pay that bill? You just lost your job. Right? What happens? What happens when that happens? What about peace? Peace, man. There's nothing like having people around you that put peace in your heart. But what happens, men, when you're the head of the household? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you go home and you're like, Lord, I ain't got peace right now, right? And the kids are home all day, moms. I ain't got peace. And I know I've talked about this before, but seriously, this is hitting me even harder. And what's funny is the standard or the things that I'm telling you, if I don't tell myself that first, I'm a hypocrite. I consider this an honor to preach. It's also really scary in a sense, because this is his word that we're preaching. So I can't just tell you something that I'm not practicing, okay? Guys, I have a quick temper. Men, who can relate? Women, who can relate? I have a quick temper. I get frustrated real quick. I get frustrated with people that don't think like me. If everybody could think like me, the world would be great. You guys know what I mean? Wouldn't it be awesome if people thought like you right? Or had the same work ethic that you do. Maybe not some of you if you're lazy, right? <laughs> or you're slow. Man, I'm thinking to myself, dude, if people could just think how I think, if people could just read the way that I read, if people would just know what I know, 
I get frustrated. Why don't they just see this? Why don't they do that? Because I'm starting to realize more and more, guys, there's just awesomeness in different callings and giftings. There's something beautiful about every single person in this room that has a unique calling and gifting of God on your life. Sarah, I'm telling you, your answers are coming. Don't stop now. He's faithful, Sarah. Yeah, I'm talking about your kids. He's faithful, Sarah. He's answering your prayers. There's, dude, there's like a, there's like a, this is going to sound weird to you. You know the ruby red slippers? That's the anointing I see over your house. It's his blood. It's covered. It's awesome. It's underneath the blood. Everything is taken care of in the spirit right now. Stay the course. Stay faithful. You hear me? Stay faithful. Even when you're faithless, he's faithful. Amen? His word says that. His word doesn't fail. Do you understand? If he promised it, he's going to do it. Now I got ahead of myself. So, if, 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 and I wasn't supposed to talk to you. That's cool. It says peace, but what about forbearance? You guys know what the word forbearance means? Forgiveness of debt. <sighs> Went through a situation in the ministry recently. And I don't know if I could forgive this dude. It was hard. You guys ever have those people in your life where you know it's God putting them in your life for a reason, but they always blame you for everything? Do you guys know what I'm saying? They never take the blame for themselves. Do you guys know what I'm saying? Or am I just, okay, and, and I'm supposed to forbearance. I'm supposed to have love and peace in my heart, but homeboy sometimes ain't got love and peace in his heart until he wrecks you and says, what, who called you to your ministry? Who called you, me or you? And if I've called you, then you obey me. You don't obey your flesh. You don't obey your mind. You don't obey your knowledge. You obey me. These are hard lessons, folks. You know, I've been doing ministry since 2001 or so, 2002, full time. And I still feel like every year he hits a reset button with me. Every single year. Every year he puts me with a new leader or a different kind of person in my life that'll either try me or I get to pour into them. If, if this has happened to you, say amen. amen. Where it's like he's, he's prepping you for the next thing and the next season and it seems like it gets easier and easier, but then he puts another thing in your path sometimes to test your faith and so then your faith gets rocked and you're like, man, Lord, I thought I learned that last year, but you really didn't, right? So you skimmed it like a test, right? Or a quiz, you just skimmed right through it. It's like, oh, I got this, right? I, I, I think I dealt with it. And then someone says something and it brings something up in your past. I'm actually pulling a plug for making peace with your past right now, right? And so you, you go through these moments of sifting in your heart and you're like, Lord, did I forbear? Do I have, he says the next one is kindness. Does your faith produce kindness? How many of you guys have been kind that you haven't seen a barber in two months? <laughs> or are you kind when you have to go to Costco and wear a mask? Or are you kind when people are struggling and hurting? You're like, man, I don't have time for that right now. Are you kind to those around you? I wasn't. That's why I'm asking. I had to repent. You know how many times I've read Psalm 51 this week? Do you know how faithful God is to bring me to that? You know what he said in there? Lord, cause me to hear joy and gladness again for the bones that thou hast broken. Cause me to hear joy and gladness again. I want that. You know what stinks is when someone comes over to your house, I'm not calling you out, but when someone comes over to your house and says, you're, you're, you've become way more serious lately. You're not the same guy. That's sad, isn't it? That night I said, Lord, cause me to hear joy and gladness again. Caused me to hear, you know what happened after I prayed that? It got worse. Amen? Because God's good. He's sifting you. He's pulling things out of you, right? It got worse and worse and worse. And things started mounting worse. And things weren't getting done worse. And then my wife's like, why are you being so mean? Worse, right? And then my kids are like, dad, we just want to play video games. No, I hate video games. Worse, right? And then Saturday happens. And it rocked me, but it transformed my heart. I don't care anymore about this. I care about him. This stuff, the move of God, 
The ministries, the healings, the blessings, the baptisms are just a byproduct of the fruit that you have in your faith. How awesome is that? When he said, go out and preach the gospel to every creature, he said, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? Then go heal the sick. That was a byproduct. They sought the face of God first. Then those things happen. Amen? You know, in the book of Acts, when we're, when we're talking about Pentecost, they got the, 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 the tongues on them and all this other cool stuff, right? And then they were out going out preaching the gospel. They were saving some at 3,000 a pop. Hot dog. They couldn't do that before, but they got something that overcame them, and they weren't even seeking that. They, you, you heard Sunday. They didn't even know what was going to happen. God, that was a byproduct of their walk with God, their obedience to him. So when I hear things like, keep quiet, son, I have to obey that because I think that's what's setting me up for what's coming. The small obediences. Pastor Jan says this to me once a week, maybe, whenever we talk. The small foxes spoil the vine. You've quoted that to me, and I don't think you realize you say it to me, but you quote it to me at least once a week. The small foxes spoil the vine. The small things, the little things he wants us to obey. The big things are easy. Having vision is easy. I do that all day long. Are you willing to dig six foot deep to put in some trenches and to get the foundation in there? Are you willing to be patient with the workers who don't show up late or the rain that's coming so it's got to delay your project? Are you willing to hear the little things first? Are you willing to submit in the area that you're at until it breaks? Then you'll have kindness. When you have been through unkindness, you love kindness all the more. There's something about going through pain that teaches you love. There's something about going through struggle that helps you appreciate and love the victory in Christ. There's something about, as as odd as this sounds, I know what I'm trying to say. Maybe you can translate it the way I'm trying to say it. Sometimes you have to feel that hatred and to go to Christ with it to understand what redemption and sacrifice And uh, what do you call that? Reconciliation means. Sometimes those things are necessary. Why was Christ reviled or beaten up and he didn't revile again? He didn't go to them and do the same thing to them. He suffered all things. He was tempted in all points yet without sin, right? The Bible says. And so like he suffered all these things for what? Because then he could say, when we go to him in prayer, then he can say this, I've been through what you've been through and I overcame it by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. Which is exactly what he's calling you to. Man, this is, none of this is in the notes, right? The last one is gentleness and self-control. Do you guys know that the word self-control, this is the point I really wanted to get to, is a sober mind. How many of us have been sober-minded through this last 60 days or so? Todd has. I go into his office all the time. What do you think, boss? Perfect answer. Yes, sir, I'll do that, right? Guys, I... I'm, not, I'm just saying that to be funny, but it's true. He's got a level head. Guy thinks really, really good. And, and sometimes I wonder what he thinks when I come into his office because the girls say, you're in there every day, teacher's pet, right? <laughs> Which is true. I'm in there all the time, right? Because I got a lot of questions because I've never done this before, right? And so we're talking about sober-mindedness and self-control, right? And the Bible says this. Um, it, it, did you guys know what the word uh, sober-mindedness means? It actually means this. I thought I had it down. I guess I didn't. Sober-mindedness, I actually memorized it. Go figure, right? (laughs) Sober-mindedness is temperance and not being intoxicated with things from the outside. You know what can intoxicate your mind? Fear. You know what can intoxicate your mind? Jealousy. You know what can intoxicate your mind? Envy. Y'all, I didn't think I had envy until the 60 days. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to throw it all out there, okay? Man, I feel like I've been through a meat grinder. There's a lot of meat, but I went through a meat grinder. (laughs) I didn't realize that I had envy in my heart. I started seeing other ministries prosper, and ours just stayed even keel. Oh, I'm going to get real, okay? Because I used to be ashamed, and I'm not ashamed anymore. God showed me that to get it out of me, right? I had this envy. I'd go into Todd's office. What is going on? Like, this is a perfect season for the ministry. This is perfect. This is tailor-made for me. I felt like Joshua. They're ready for us, man. They're bred for us. Let's go get them. Nothing. Crickets. 
And then all the events shut down for the rest of the year. Oh, man, I was frustrated. Do you guys know what I mean by that? How many businesses shut down and I'm over here complaining? Right? I didn't realize the envy I had and the jealousy. I didn't have fear. I don't really fear much. I fear, I, I don't really don't. I don't think about fear, but I do think about why my heart goes there. And then I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, why am I going through this? And he said, because I want you to prepare the church for where it's going to. Help prepare the church. So, dude, you know what he does? He shuts everything else down in my life so that I can focus on here to get us where we need to go. To help you. Oh my gosh, how faithful is he on that? And here I am getting mad about it. (laughs) All things work together for good to those that love him and are called according to his purpose. To those of you that maybe have lost a job or a business, I'm telling you, all things work together for good. It's a promise of his. You don't see what's coming, but it's coming. You don't see it yet. But maybe this is where you needed to start ministry. Amen? Maybe you were so consumed with doing your work and you were like, Lord, but maybe I should obey this. And then your business shuts down and then he's like, okay, now you can do it. Maybe, maybe. I wrote this down somewhere. I did somewhere. I think I erased it. Oh no, it's right here. To some of you, Maybe your job, maybe your business, maybe your ministry was keeping you from seeking him being holy. Maybe he had to shut those things down for you to seek God in truth, just like you had to do to me. Get real, bro. Get real, mass. This isn't about you, mass. Oh, man, I got flaws, dude. I don't, I don't think pridefully like that, but I'm just saying, like, this isn't about what I can do and the knowledge that I have. Did you know that he could use a rock to worship him? He don't need me. I get the honor to be used by my father. Oh, man. This getting real right now because what do we have? 18 days till the Pentecost day. Let's be clean for Christ, man. Let's be clean to receive what's inside because I promise you this. He brings the fire you're asking for. It's going to intensify what's going on in your heart. It always does. Every time someone says, I'm going to step out for the Lord, guess what happens? War. War right at the gate, and the things you didn't think you had in your heart, you have them. All the anger, rage, jealousy, all that stuff pops out because you're stepping into something holy. And you know what you realize? You're not holy inside. It's okay. Who was it? Deal Moody once said, the closer I get to the Lord, the sicker my thoughts get. Because he's prepping you for holiness. You're not holy. He's showing you how unholy you really are to show you who he is and that he's going to take over your mind as you transform yourself by the renewing of the word. Amen? You transform your mind by this and his spirit comes in because he's so faithful. His spirit comes in not only to seal you to the day of promise, but then he gives you the power to teach other people how to do it. As a matter of fact, Timothy says this. He said this, uh, hold fast the pattern of sound words, which you have heard from me in the faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. This is 2 Timothy uh, 1, uh, 13. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. This you know, all those that are in Asia have turned away from me. Among those are uh, Philegius and I don't even know the name. The Lord grant mercy to the household of Anisarus, for he often refreshed me. He goes on to say after that, he says here that those things that I've committed unto you, commit to faithful men so that they may teach others. Those things that he's teaching you right now, we're supposed to commit to faithful men. Be careful the lessons you're teaching people if they're not faithful. And here's why. I was talking to Todd about this earlier today. I thought... How many of us are putting expectations of what we want on people that aren't mature enough to receive it yet? So I went to a healing meeting. I was 19 or so, 18, 19. My dad said, I want you to go to the healing service because he, he, he thought I should get healed. Uh, I had a real bad back issue. Weightlifting. <laughs> Stud, right? I was lifting and I hurt my back and He's like, you should go to the church service and get healed. And he's like, Massey, I'm telling you, you're going to get healed. You're going to get, I wasn't even saved. So I went to go seek the Lord for his hand, not his heart. And guess what didn't happen at that church service? I'm not saying because I wasn't saved. His gifts, the gifts and calling without repentance, he can heal me when he wants. It didn't happen. You know what that did to me for two years? Forget God. 
I came expecting. I wasn't ready. I wasn't mature enough to receive that. The things that he's telling you to expect is for you, not for other people. Be careful. Be careful. Commit to faithful men so that they may teach other people how to do the same. Is this making sense to anybody? Seriously, this is real now. You know, we want the great move of God, but I really want us to be pure before the Lord because then it'll come and it'll flow. And you know what? It'll sustain this time. It won't be a move. It'll just be us. A revival that's been happening for seven years, guys. And I keep asking myself, can I be blunt? I kept asking myself today, what are we looking for? We have it every Wednesday and Sunday. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? Guys, I don't want to go to another meeting. I want to come here and receive it every time. I want to go home in my closet and receive it there too. I want to go pray with my kids and see the power of God manifest on them, which happens. I want to pray with my wife so she starts seeing visions for her ministry and her life. It happens. It's awesome, right? It shouldn't be just here. It should be at home too in our closets. It should be in our cars every day. It should be when we listen to music that some, and I'm not a big fan of worship music all the time, like the, 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 the repetitive stuff, right? Until I play it, and then I love it. It's weird, right? So sometimes I'll listen to Beth, I'm like, same album. And then I play it, I'm like, this is awesome, right? And so I started to see that, like, if I can't do it at home, am I going to get it here? Probably not. Go home and do it at your houses. I said this once before. If we don't abide in Christ, then the ministries here become the crutch that you need instead of Jesus. We don't want that here. We want you to be empowered because this is the year of intentional leadership. Amen? That's what this is about. It's teaching you guys how to lead so you guys can go into the, all the world and preach the gospel. Or you can go into all the world and lay hands on people and they shall recover because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. That's what he says. Amen? I'm almost done. I'm going right to the end. Why am I talking about having a sober mind? He said, be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. If you're not sober, and you're not in the word of God, and you're not praying constantly, you're going to get attacked. And then you know what happens? We start to blame Satan instead of the lack that we had. I know that stung, but I've done it too. That's why I can say it. And if you're feeling that, don't feel condemned, because here's what's really cool. Did you know that even through your faithlessness, God's faithful? Do you guys know that Psalm 33, 4 says this? For the word, of the, the word of the Lord is upright and all of his work is done in faithfulness. Your lack in joy in your life, the fruit of the Spirit, meditate on his faithfulness. Has he still clothed you and fed you? You still living? Still breathing? Still got the little stink faces running around? Oh yeah, he's faithful. Nothing like going home and seeing my kids smile. Nothing like it. Because they're an extension of my fat face, right? They're an extension of mama. Or they want to show me something new all the time. They play these video games that are just mindless to me, right? And, 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 and you know what I mean? They play a new game called Roblox. And I was playing it with uh, Nathan. And I, I hate video games. I can't stand it. I used to love video games, and then I got saved. <laughs> no condemnation. I'm kidding. Totally kidding. No, really what happened was I got saved and I just didn't care about it anymore. And now my kids, they're like, Dad, I want to show you this new game. And I'm like, I don't want to play your new game. And they get hurt because they just want to hang out with Daddy. And it taught me something the last couple of weeks because they're home all the time. And only on the weekends they play. It taught me something. God has never rejected me when I've asked him to be with me. Even in the small things. Man, if you're home a lot, count it all joy, man. Count it all joy right? Here's another one. First Thessalonians, I'm sorry, Psalm 37 says this, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. You're lacking peace, feed on his faithfulness. Amen? Sometimes I hear things like, I can't wait till the Lord comes back. I can't wait. Lord, don't tarry anymore. Come back. Do you know what Jesus even prayed? I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. I'm asking you to keep them from evil. Because you're here for a reason, folks. Like, I love the moves of God. Trust me, I do. And I grew up in the uber, uh, way opposite of you. I grew up in the uber Pentecostal movement. So I began to hate it because it's like, it's just a bunch of fluff. But man, I started to experience the real and it's awesome. But I think about like how many people have never experienced a touch from God that are out there every day walking these streets or how many people want to know this Jesus that we're preaching, right? How many people want to know this Jesus that we preach? 
and they don't know. And you know what? Every one of you is an evangelist. So don't tell me it's a calling. Every one of you can open your mouth for Jesus. Can I get more real? I used to love WWE. Wrestling. For all of you who don't know what I'm talking about. I used to love wrestling. There's this one wrestler that is a current one. I saw his testimony on YouTube. Lady asked him, she said, you, on your Instagram, you have I love Jesus on it. Most people would get flack for that. Why did you do it? He said, well, I never grew up with Christ growing up. I didn't know it. My mother was beaten as a kid. She lost her daughter in an overdose. And my father grew up in Bulgaria where they didn't have churches. So I had no clue about this Jesus thing. He said, then I lost my fiance. My sister died of an overdose within three months. I was at my lowest of low. And people were telling me, man, you're not the same guy anymore. You're not the same guy. He said, some guy came over to my house. And he said, bro, I think you need faith. And he was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm good. I don't want that stuff. And he said, I'll tell you what, I won't force you. I'll just come and bring the scriptures to you. You can read for yourself what Christ is telling you through your season. He got saved. Eight months later, he got baptized. He said, I don't care what people say. God changed my life. Amen. In a national interview, a wrestler, what's in the weird entertainment business, talks about Jesus Christ. He ain't an evangelist. He's an entertainer. But guess what he just did? Oh, man. And he didn't even talk about anything else except what God did for him, the fruit of his life. The fruit of his life. Not his works, not his ministry, not what he does for career. He changed me, man. He changed me. That's it. That's all it takes. 1 Thessalonians 5 says this, He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. You're lacking kindness? Think about that. Philippians 1.6 says this, he who has begun a good work on you will also complete it. If you're lacking goodness, did you guys know that ever since he's called me to ministry, every single word I've received from him first has been completed and more? Oh, you want to talk about goodness? He is good, dude. He is awesome. He's healed me of all of my diseases. The only thing I'm asking for is to like reduce my intake. Take the, this hunger away, Lord. Satan's buffeting me right now. I'm kidding. I just love enchiladas. <laughs> right? Homeboy loved them churros from Casa Amigos, dog. You know what I'm saying? Some of them churros with that chocolate. All right, I'll stop. Um, lastly, this. Even when you aren't faithful, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2, if we are faithless, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. God can't deny himself. I just want to be at the place for all of us here. And if you guys were in my position, we don't have to like raise hands or anything like that. I'm going to pray with you to close us out. But if you've been in the position that I've been the last couple months where you're just like, man, am I really seeking God? That's the place I really want us to be right now because he doesn't deny himself and I don't want to deny him either. I don't want to say I'm not being blessed because of my carnal mind not understanding the spirit of God. Amen? I want to be in a place where we can rejoice with our kids. And Jillian, I was going to speak to you too. There's something about being faithful when you don't have anything in you. There's something about driving that car still, not having gas in the tank, that God just supernaturally puts gas in it. Do you know what I'm saying? There's something about giving when you don't have and God begins to bless it. Yeah, new season's coming here, sweetheart. You wait. Oh man, you're, you're walking in some new stuff right now. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't doubt if there's, I think there's two... There's two women where you work right now that you're ministering to right now. They're, I think I don't know if one's pregnant or one just had a kid. There's just something going on with ministry at your work right now. And I just see where the Lord's like beginning to use your mouth more than just your actions. I think you say, I'm just gonna just gonna just gonna practice what I preach, not really preach it. No, he's beginning to open those doors right now, and God's faithful and keep doing it because this is for you. This is what you were asking for this whole time. The whole time. God's faithful to you. Amen. Just continue to walk. Continue to be faithful, amen? And, and, and if you guys have been in this position, did you guys get something out of tonight? Praise God. Okay, cool. So what I want to do tonight is, if you've been in this place like me, because I was there and I had to repent of my, my stuff, but not repentance in the, oh God, change the nation. It's literally, Lord, create in me a clean heart, oh God, to receive from you what you have for me, amen? Create in me something that's new, because I don't want to depend on yesterday's manna, Amen? I don't want to depend on the quail from yesterday. I want to see fresh fruit. I want to see fresh anointing. 
A fresh wind, Father. How many of you guys need that tonight? Golly. All right, Father, I thank you, Lord, for tonight. God, even the ministry time of speaking life into people, I thank you for the families in this room right now. Father, for ministries, I'm praying for big things after Sunday. Father, I'm thankful for ministries that are going to rise out of this church. People who are called to ministry, I thank you, Father, you put that burden on their heart. God, I thank you, Lord, for those who didn't have joy and lacked kindness and patience. Lord, those that lacked it, Father, God, I thank you, Lord, you give it to them supernaturally and impart it to them that no devil can take it from them. In Jesus' name, Father, I even thank you for those who are going through a financial issue right now, Father. I hear the Lord say, just be faithful to what I've called you to do and, and that he will provide for you. Be faithful, be faithful to me, to me. Be faithful, he says. And Father, I thank you, Lord, you would increase those finances in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the mothers in this room, Father, that are praying for their kids. I, I plead the blood of Jesus over that. And I thank you, Lord, for a new and living way in the households now, in Jesus' name, that, Father, it's almost summertime. Praise God. But I also thank you, Lord, for those who are lacking a, a true love for you again. I think you, you rekindle that fire right now. You rekindle their heart and their mind to love you and only you. And that, Father, out of loving you and abiding in you comes everything else. Father, you promise that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then these things will be added. I thank you, God, that we seek you first with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Thank you, God, for your grace and the willingness to learn. Thank you for making us teachable, Father, for being meek, Lord, to understand. Lord, thank you for the integrity we have in our hearts to come to you openly. And for those that don't think, or those of you that think you're too far gone, listen to me. His arm is not too short that it cannot save, and his ear is not too far that it cannot hear, the Bible says. Cry out to him, and he will give you his desires. In Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I thank you we bless them as they go home in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today at Revive Us Now at our YouTube channel. Remember to click that subscribe button to Revive Church and share this video with a friend. And if you'd like to support this ministry, go to reviveusnow.com forward slash give.